Hi, in this video I'd like to consider the concept of exploits in World of Warcraft, in particular to PvE content, especially in light of the fact that a number of people have been banned or, you know, suspended because of exploiting, you know, twice really in the space of a week. And I want to look at these two and decide, you know, is one much more of an exploit than another, or indeed is one even an exploit at all? So what's prompted me to do this video in particular, of course, it'll come as no surprise, it's as a result of three guilds who'd killed Mythic Helia, having that kill removed from them and their characters banned for exploiting uh, the content. Now, I did a video on the issue around this as soon as it broke, but one of the guilds who was involved in this, Exorcist, has put up a pretty robust defense. It has to be said, the other two guilds are obviously disappointed, but they've sort of accepted it. They've been quite gracious. I'm not saying Exorcists have not been gracious, by the way, uh, but they've just actually put their case forward. And I have to say, it's a very, very compelling case. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to read their stuff. They talk about a number of things, actually, while they're at it. Uh, I suppose they've got plenty of time to do that now, and I don't mean that cruelly, because actually Exorcist is a guild I admire a lot, not least of which because they um, provide a very useful boss mod for us in Exorcist Raid Tools. And if you don't have that, then it's worth getting. So, before we, we go any further, we really do need to understand what we mean by exploit. Now, when I do videos on various discussion things, obviously there's going to be some people who agree with me and there's going to be some people who disagree with me. This is good. This is important. I do vlogs like this specifically to get debates going. Um, but sometimes you get someone disagreeing with you because, well, that's not what I understand by that word. And it's like, um, I'm not making words up. The words are defined in the dictionary. We, we can't argue about that. <laughs> You can argue on points of opinion. So what we really have to do, I think, is to talk about what is an exploit. Now, if you're going to discuss the meaning of anything, first of all, if it's a simple word, then of course you go by the dictionary definition. Now, to exploit something literally means to use it especially to get an advantage. It, it specifically means to use something to gain an advantage. There is nothing ne necessarily negative about that. A lot of people, obviously in a World of Warcraft content, con you know, use the word exploit uh, in a negative sense. And because maybe you don't use the word exploit a lot in your general life, it's not a common word as such, then you only ever have that negative view of the word. But in actual fact, it's, it's neither negative nor positive. It's like a tool, isn't it? When does a tool become a weapon? It depends on its use. So... Exploit just means to use to gain an advantage from. So if, for example, you're playing a sport and your opponent makes a mistake and you pounce on that and get some advantage in that game, there's nothing negative about that. That's how you, you win a game of anything. You're exploiting your opponent's weakness or mistake. Exploit, therefore, has a very positive meaning. Similarly, you can have someone who is a con artist and they prey on elderly people and extort money from them. They are exploiting the fact that perhaps their victims are too trusting um, and you know, exploiting that trusting nature. That's very negative. Then if you're gonna, some terms, you're not talking about their general everyday use, you're talking about a specific legal term, in which case, of course, it will be defined. And it's no different with Blizzard. Blizzard also um, say what they mean by that. In their terms of service, they say that you are not allowed to exploit a bug. And that's all there is to it. There is no more than that as far as I can tell. Um, so what that basically means is you cannot take advantage deliberately of a bug to, to get some benefit for yourself. Now let's counterpoint a couple of examples. Now, the first example where this came up quite recently was a world quest was bugged, it awarded artifact power. Now normally what would happen with a world quest that awards artifact power is you do the world quest, you get the artifact power, it's gone, it's finished, forget it. Do it on another character if you want, who cares. 
With this particular one, it was possible to exploit a bug that allowed you to do that world quest over and over and over and over again. And some people did to get a lot of artifact power. Now, Blizzard's take on that was they didn't ban everyone who, you know, did the world quest a couple of times because they technically benefited. But it's like, well, you could accidentally do that. You're not deliberately doing it. But the people who did it over and over again for several hours, well, they were doing it deliberately. They knew it was a bug. They know it's not supposed to work like that. Therefore, they are exploiting a bug. So banned. Uh, as well, of course, as later on they announced that the artifact power would be removed as well so that they don't retain that benefit when their characters are restored. It's not a permanent ban. Uh, it's like a suspension, really. So there's a clear exploit, and that's what people have in their mind, a clear exploit. Then we have the situation with Mythic Hellier. Now, as I reported it, the situation was this uh, a few days ago when it broke. So Hellier does a breath in, in phase one and phase three. It's a bit of a pain in the ass breath because what it means is you, in the first phase, you have got to switch to some adds and burst them down. That's taking damage off the boss. In the third phase, you've got to move to soak some stuff, which is also potentially taking DPS off. Uh, as well, of course, as it puts like a, a healing absorb on you, which is you know going to use up more healer mana um, to get rid of. So, and puts you in greater danger of dying in the meantime. So the issue was this. The breath is done on a tank. It's directed on the tank. If the tank dies while she's casting it, as far as I am aware, the breath doesn't get cast. That's not the exploit. That's not the bug. That, that's the way it works. Um, so deliberately killing a tank as she does a breath to stop the breath happening is not considered an exploit because they're not taking advantage of a bug. They're taking advantage of an in-game mechanic and therefore it comes under the aegis of clever use of in-game mechanics. Now, just to avoid any argument on that point, because that's not a point of opinion, what Exorcist did, and they're dead right about this, I hadn't actually thought about this, I have to say, but what they explained was, we do exactly the same thing on Archimond, Mythic Archimond from the last expansion. There was a situation in phase three on Mythic Archimond where a crystal spawns, it's pushing a tank back, and you have to DPS down the crystal. If you don't, the tank will die. But if you ignore it and just DPS the boss, the tank will die. But the crystal will then disappear. So you can just res the tank and you've been able to save the DPS you would have had to do on the crystal and put it on the boss because it's very much phase three of Archimond, like a lot of phase threes of bosses, especially end of instance bosses, a bit of a DPS race. Uh, the longer it goes on, the more chance you have got to wipe and the more chance it is before things will just get too much for you. This was considered a valid tactic. It was simple as this. You would try and have no one die in the first two phases so you had all your battle reses available so that when you got into that last phase, you could afford to sacrifice tanks as long as no one else had died and used the battle reses to avoid having to kill the crystal. So you could just focus DPS on the boss. Perfectly valid tactic. Blizzard had no issue with it. This is exactly the same. You're killing a tank to prevent a mechanic that's going to stop you DPS in the boss um, 100%. No issue with it. And Blizzard have not said they have an issue with that. So where is the issue? It's that in phase three, because if you do it in phase one, you know, and she breathes, or, or the tank dies and she doesn't breathe, the next time she's due to do a breath, she'll do, still do a breath and you've got the option of letting your tank die then or not. Now, what Exhaust decided to do was to save this up for phase three. They're not that, they weren't that bothered in phase one, apparently. Um, but it's phase three where things get very hairy, where, again, it's a DPS race uh, and they want to get it down as quickly as possible. They'd rather not have the breath. I suppose it gives you more room to play with as well. Just I've only experienced Heroic, of course. But the problem is that there is a bug in phase three, which means that if a tank dies before doing the breath, so she doesn't breathe, she will never breathe again. So in other words, you only have to kill a tank once and you will have no breaths in phase three at all. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. It's a bug. So if you kill your tank on the first breath, 
if the reason you're doing it is so that she won't breathe again in phase three, well, you're exploiting a bug, and that's illegal, and for which you should be banned. But if you're killing a tank just so that she doesn't do that one breath, that's not exploiting a bug. If you are perfectly prepared to kill a tank on every breath in phase three, that is not exploiting a bug. And Exorcist pointed out, with logs to prove it, that at the end of the fight, when they killed Mythic Helia, they had several battle reses left. In other words, they had the capacity to kill tanks and res them up again on every breath. And they had the evidence to prove it. Now I'm going to say, in this situation, they have not exploited a bug. I'm actually now going to say that. I was a little bit... I had sympathy for them when I was doing the original video, when it broke, before I knew this from Exorcist. I had some sympathy for them, but at the same time I accepted, you know, um, the so far the only response that had come from Limit, the gracious response of, well, all right, it was an exploit, we'll, we'll take it, we'll take it, it's not nice, we'll take it. But now I'm, I'm saying, actually, if that bug wasn't in the game, if she behaved in P3 as she did in P1, Exorcist would still have killed that boss when they killed it. No one would be crying exploit. It would just be considered a clever use of game mechanics. And just as with Mythic Archimonde, it would probably become the accepted method to use as long as people didn't die and use up the battle reses earlier on in the fight. It would just become the accepted strategy. The reason they have been banned is because there's a bug in the game for which they're not responsible that just so happens to make it look like they can get some advantage. And I don't think that's on, I have to say. I don't think that's on. And, and what especially I would say is it's not against their terms and uh, conditions because that simply says, all it says, it doesn't matter what, you know, some people will think that, you know, they've, they've exploited and should be banned and some people will have sympathy like myself and it's fine to think either way. But what no one can really think, I feel, is that we're, we can't sort of reimagine Blizzard's terms and conditions because all it says on the issue is exploiting bugs. And I don't think they have. There just happens to be a bug. It, all they've done, really, is saved themselves the hassle of using the battle res that they never used anyway, that they still had at the end of the fight. So in that situation, and again, I want to put this in the full context of, because there's difference between myself, who's hoping to kill these things before Nighthold comes out, and someone who's hoping to get the world first. All the preparation they put in, all the, the work they put in while they're progressing, but in the weeks beforehand as well, to get ready for it. And I think they've been cruelly treated. Because it's not even like Blizzard have said... Because what Blizzard could have done is they could have taken the kill away from them and just said, we don't want you doing that, that's exploiting. Which I would still now disagree with. But they could have at least just said, we'll take the kill away, that's exploiting, you're not doing it. Do it properly. But they've taken them out of the race by effectively suspending them. Now, I, I'm not keeping my eye on the individuals in these guilds, by the way. I don't know if it's a very temporary suspension and that they'll be allowed back in the race if the race is still going on after a short period or anything or what. I don't know. But what I do know is that I think it's harsh. I think, apart from anything else, that now, knowing what I know, I think the kill should have stood. Um, and if not, at the very least, I think the very least Blizzard out because it's their bug that's the problem. No one's taking advantage of the bug. And if Blizzard felt they're getting a benefit from it, because it could be argued you could have a guild who's doing the same thing. And maybe someone dies and uses the battle res and they wouldn't have been able to um, get away with every breath. But by using it on the first breath, they're sort of getting an advantage, even though they're not, it's not part of their tactic. Even then it's harsh. But in Exhaust's case, they've got no benefit from it at all. They've posted their logs. Their logs clearly show their battle reses at the end. Um, the least Blizzard could have done is to say, actually, we're going to take the kill off you because we don't want you doing it that way. Don't do it that way. Do it another way. But you're still in the race.
But anyway, that's what I think. Uh, obviously, put your comments down below as well. And of course, if you found the video interesting, as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share as well. And until next time, I'll see you later.